Hey everybody, welcome to my third video on concatenation. Today we're going to be talking about algebra and calculus with concatenation. So let's first start with some algebra. So of course we have to remember the concatenation formula, so expect that you know it, I expect that you watched the first video on how we actually got to this formula. Uh, and then we have some other two things that will help us in just a little bit. Okay, so let's start with the actual like concatenation. So we're going to be concatenating functions. Now you might be like, why? What's the point? Well, there really is no point. It's just, why not? <laughs> so, you know, we have a function with variables. So what if we use like other like functions? Now, this doesn't really actually make sense because these numbers are really only supposed to be integers. And if we have functions, then we're thinking of like functions. I mean, we could think of functions that map integers to other integers. Um, but these functions I'm going to be using are just these common functions, these real value functions. So um, it's not totally, it, it's basically nonsense, but you know, let's just go with it. So uh, first we can think of if we're going to be concatenating f and g. These are both functions of x, so just assume that I'm, I'm not going to write the of x the whole time because that just would be very repetitive. So basically let's just copy this formula down uh, using these other variables. So we have f times 10 to the floor of log of g, and log is again base 10 uh, because we are working in base 10, and then plus g here, right? Just, and, and actually I want to talk about that more. If we were working in, with numbers in binary base 2, we would use 2 to the log base 2 here, or e if we're working base e, which is weird, but you know, then we would use e and ln. So, um, okay, so let's, let's do an example, because why not? So uh, if we do, I don't know, e to the x concatenated with x squared, this is going to give us e to the x times 10 to the, the floor of log of x squared. I'm kind of running into this here. So uh, it's a plus g, uh, and then plus 1, and then plus x squared. Now, here we can use log properties and move this 2 to the front, but it's not totally necessary. Um, so this is just some example. Um, we could even go more basic and just say x concatenated with x. This is just going to be x times 10 to the floor of log of x plus 1 plus x, right? So this is pretty basic, uh, and we'll take the derivative of this guy in a second. But let's actually just take the derivative of f concatenated with g in general. So um, let me, uh, yeah, let me, um, actually, let's just, let's just keep this for now. Uh, so we're going to take uh, the derivative of f concatenated with g. Okay, so what would this be? Well, we can, again, just use this formula, or really just this formula, and I'll just take the derivative of it. So this is going to be a kind of long expression. So first up, we have the product rule. Um, we have this weird chain rule portion here, so I'm going to ignore it for now. I'm going to start with this, this f prime times this guy. So we have f prime times 10 to the floor of log of g plus 1. Uh, okay, so that's our first term, right? I'm not including the plus g because that's going to be at the end. I'm still working on the, the, power, or the product rule, okay? And then I'm going to add, uh, so I'm going to continue on this line because we have a long expression here. Then I'm going to add, uh, we're going to take f, multiply that by the derivative of this. So we have um, the derivative here, so that's going to be very beneficial for us. So we have 10, so, so this you can actually just derive using basic properties like e to the x, and then the chain rule of course, and then you multiply by the factor of ln 10 because we're working with 10 here. So it's you should know it if you're working with calculus. Um, so we have 10 to the h of x, which is just h of x in our case is just log of g plus 1. So log of g plus 1 multiplied by ln of 10. And then multiplied by the derivative of this guy. So what is the derivative of this guy? So we know the derivative of 1 is 0, so we really just are focusing on the derivative of the floor of log of g. Well, the derivative of the floor function, let's think about it. So 
if we think of its graph, you can kind of graph it. It looks like a staircase, right? Because, um, let me just take the floor of x in general. So between, if we have one, two, three, four, and so on, right? Um, between zero and one, the floor of any number is zero. So it's going to look like that. And then the, between, um, so one, two, three, four, right? Between one and two, our function, uh, the floor of x looks like one, right? And then between two and three, it's at two. And then between three and four, it's at three, and so on, right? Um, so it looks like this staircase function. So it's, it's sloped to zero everywhere, except at these points. These are points of discontinuity here. Um, and we do have to consider those, but I'm not really going to emphasize them too much because this is just nonsense anyway. So um, just know that. Uh, I forget exactly where. I think we just have to set, um, uh, I forget exactly how to, like, every, how long these intervals are, because this isn't just the floor of x, this is the floor of log of g of x. Um, so we're just, we just know that it's zero everywhere except at the points of discontinuity, which we're just going to omit from our domain, basically. Um, and then, basically, uh, we're going to, uh, yeah, so we're going to basically just take the derivative of log of g. So the derivative of log of, I put h here, right, which is no h is equal to g. This is just going to be g prime of x over g of x times ln 10. Okay, and then of course we have the plus g prime, taking the derivative of g prime. So I'm just going to add that here since I have space over here, so plus g prime, right? So now let's think about this. Well, this whole term is going to go away because we have the zero there, right? So this, oh god, that was terrible. Hold on, this, this whole thing goes to zero. Uh, I'm sorry of how ugly that was, but uh, yeah, so really, the entire derivative is this guy. If I can box it incorrectly, which I can't. I'm sorry for that horrible box, but you know, you get the idea. So this is our derivative of any function. So if we take the derivative of this guy, we just plug it in here. So if we take the derivative of x concatenated with x, and I guess I should put parentheses around here. Um, this is just going to be f prime, which is just 1, so we don't have to worry about it, times 10 to the log of x, the floor, I'm sorry, the floor of log of x, uh, and then plus 1, and then plus g prime, which is just 1. And this is our entire derivative. So, what's the point? I don't know. <laughs> there really isn't a point, but it's really cool to think about. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about something more applicable um, called happy numbers. So, uh, yeah, that'll be very interesting. So I hope you enjoy that. So thank you guys for watching this pretty useless video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Hey, guys. So I just wanted to add this little portion here on Desmos. Here we have the floor of X, uh, and we can, we can, and actually you can see that it's uh, these, like, little line segments here, this little staircase. If we do the floor of log of x, you can see that, um, you know, you're going to have these horizontal line segments, you know, uh, that, you know, go, they, and you have the points of discontinuity where it jumps at every, every point, so these are all multiples of 10, so this is every point where log of x is equal to an integer, right, so 100, you know, because log of 100, right, and then log of all these powers of 10, they're all integers. Um, and so log of g of x, the floor of log of g of x, um, is discontinuous where log of g of x is equal to an integer. So that's kind of, you know, whatever. But, um, so then if we have our function x concatenated with x, you can see it's just made up of these horizontal line, or not horizontal, these straight line segments here. Uh, that they grow very, there are these huge gaps between them, and the gaps get larger and larger and the, the length of each of the segments gets larger and larger. You can see that it's this like super long segment that spans a long time, and it grows super quickly. Um, 
and we can actually, the derivative is going to map the slope, and since these are straight line segments, you're going to expect horizontal segments of our derivative, and that's exactly what we get. Uh, you can see here that this line segment has a slope of 2. This, or this line segment here has a slope of 1.1, uh, and then we have this line segment has a slope of 11, right? Um, and, and it just kind of keeps growing in this pattern. We have, you know, 101, and then up here we have uh, 1,001, and then we have 10,001, and then 100,001, uh, which is very interesting. They're, they're all like multiples of 10 plus 1, like this is here. Um, and actually here, this is 1.1. Yeah, so, so these are all just multiples of 10 plus 1. Um, so yeah, because we have this 0 0.1 is a multiple of 10 plus 1, and then, and then if we zoom in, oops, if we zoom in more, we're going to have, you know, 1.01, so that's 0 0.01 plus 10, uh, plus 1, uh, so, so that's kind of the whole thing with it. Um, so I think this is pretty cool to look at, um, very interesting. So, uh, it behaves exactly like a floor function does, and, you know, so does the derivative. So I just think this is pretty cool. So yeah, thank you guys for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.